here with Charlotte uh, Thiori, Art Director at Frozenbyte, and we're going to talk about ways to break into the games industry as a 3D character artist. Welcome to this session, Charlotte. Yes, thank you very much. Um, can you give us an overview of your background and what inspired you to follow your path into the games industry? Yes, so hi, I'm Charlotte, and working at Frozenbyte as an art director and also character artist whenever I have the time. So my previous projects are, for example, Twine 4 and Nine Parchments. How I ended up here, expressing myself visually has always been really important for me and natural since childhood. So I have been drawing a lot my whole life. And as a kid in the 90s, I watched my brother play games like Final Fantasy VII and Zelda and Super Mario 64. And the last mentioned was actually something that I played as my first game ever. So I have fond memories of that one. By the time I was a teenager, I was quite big Final Fantasy fan and did some fan art as well. So that way the art and games kind of Sure. combined already in my younger like younger years <laughs> so, and after high school like about 2008 I was thinking that becoming a graphic designer was the only option if I want to do art for a living but then luckily I found out about Metropolia and that you could study 3D animation and visualization there and I got in and that way I kind of ended up working in the games industry. What makes a 3D character artist portfolio really stand out from the crowd for you? Of course, very skilled artists' work will always stand out, no matter what the artistic style is. But for me, I really enjoy like stylized character art, so a portfolio with really stunning stylized characters will stand out for me the most. It depends on the company, but for our company, the time I've been art director, we haven't really been ever looking for a 3D artist who makes only characters, but more like environment props and then some of the 3D artists who mostly make uh, environment props will also get the chance to make characters, so it's not the, maybe the most common artist type that people are looking for, but like it's really useful for an artist who wants to be a character artist to also have some environment props in their portfolio. So that's a good way to get a job to start at the games industry. And then hopefully you will get chances to make some characters as well. This is also how I started in Frozen Bite, like uh, during Trine 3, I started by making environment props. And then later I got the chance to make animals and characters as well. Pretty much all the 3D artists start as environment prop artists in our mm -hmm. projects usually. And then if we, maybe they have had some characters in their portfolio that are like on the skill level that is good for us. And we might then give them some character work as well. So. But yeah, it's most common uh, 3D artist way is to make environment props. And for also those artists who make characters, they also make most of the time uh, environment assets. So, How do you rank the importance of originality in a portfolio? The first most important thing is, is of course, the skill level. So knowing the fundamentals well and that the skill level is there. And then uh, the second most would be maybe the style match that um, not necessarily like, of course, artists can do different styles, but for example, that we can see that you are interested in that kind of art that we are making in our project, for example. So this is just an example, but uh, if you, for example, say that, you are really passionate about fantasy art and want to work on trying style art, uh, but then your portfolio has only some 
work examples of guns and cars, then that might make me wonder, like, is this really your passion? So it's important that the artist shows that this is really what they want to do so, so that there is this connection. And I would say maybe after that, the originality is the third most important thing. So like as long as you show you have a strong artistic eye and understanding of the fundamentals and that you're able to come up with pleasing designs, it doesn't need to be super original necessarily. And it's enough that I can see potential in your portfolio and get the impression that you are interested in doing that kind of art that we need. So, but yeah, however, I do think that each asset in the game should be interesting looking and have some personality. So even if it's just some basic asset like a barrel or something, it should still have kind of personality. And I love organic and stylized look. So if I only see straight lines and 90 degree angles in your portfolio, then it's not that interesting for me. If you were learning from scratch to be a, a 3D character artist now, where would you start? Um, well, first I would determine goals for myself so that it's clear like what I want to do and achieve and why. And then it's usually always when learning anything, it's good to start with the basics. And I know that many artists are concerned like, what is their art style and everything like that. But that's something that you don't have to worry in the beginning. Like it's more important to just get to know the fundamentals. And it's really so that if you have the basics really strong uh, learned already, then you should be able to do different art styles because uh, it's kind of the same building blocks you use, but in different order what makes the style so it's not that you just learn one style and that's it but it's much better to learn the uh, fundamentals first so i would first start learning those one at a time there is so much to learn so it's good to keep focused and there is tons of great resources to start with and communities online so it's also really important to have feedback when you're trying to learn new stuff so then you know where to improve it's really important to learn to observe and use reference photos or real life reference to to learn art fundamental stuff so also like not only study the theory but also having some goal oriented concrete practice is really important i think you should make a lot of art and do a lot of mistakes so yeah. you don't need, need to be perfect like no one is perfect then it's much more important to keep learning and going to the right direction i think all the great artists are so good because they have been always learning more and more and they are never feeling like okay now i'm ready and i don't have to learn anything more so that's why they just keep getting better yeah, it's like a lifelong learning kind of thing with an artist, isn't it? There's always something to improve on. Yeah. yeah. And I guess it's like the you have to just have the um, perseverance, don't you, to keep pushing ahead and learning new things. Yeah, and seeing that even if you make mistakes, they are kind of working for you. Like, it's really frustrating often, like when you're like, oh, how do I draw a hand or something? And yeah, you just, when you, it's like your brain is, learning the best when you do mistakes which is kind of annoying but that's how it is and so you shouldn't be too afraid like thinking that you have to be perfect from the start and just do all the mistakes makes sense yeah. yeah can you give any top tips for saving time so when you start to actually build a 3d character portfolio actually i don't know if i have like uh, some time-saving tips because I think that it's actually really important to use a lot of time to make the portfolio as good as possible. Uh, so also if you make a 3D model, also making polished final images and 
like all the way to the end so that you can show your model in the best possible light and best angles. So not just making really good models, but also doing the effort that you can present them in a nice way. Uh, but I do have one tip that is super fast to do and can improve your portfolio a lot. So simply removing older work that isn't really up to par with your latest work. So if it doesn't improve the overall uh, image of your portfolio, then it's maybe better just to remove that kind of work. So your portfolio is as good as the weakest work in it. So it's mm -hmm. always quality over quantity. Um, yeah, and I have seen some portfolios that have had some promising work, but then also some questionable, not that good quality work. So then that has made me doubtful. And sometimes it might be that the thing that makes or breaks your opportunities if, if you remove something old like it's it can be better to not have that stuff at all that can hinder your opportunities yeah what's your um favorite 3d character or character design in a game and why my favorite character designs in games are probably from the times that are nostalgic for me mm -hmm. yep. um, that inspired me originally to start creating characters myself it's super difficult question like this was the most difficult question to sure. pick, pick just one character as there is often like the whole cast of characters in in games so if you have a group of game characters it's you have to think like how how they work as a group and in relation to one another so that's like how i think about it then Many Final Fantasy games have had really interesting groups of characters. And my favorite ones are Final Fantasy 7, 9 and 10. And I haven't actually thought about it consciously, but they have so much variation between the characters that it, that's something actually that I also find important when designing a cast of characters for a game myself, for example, when designing the characters of nine parchments, my aim was to come up with all kinds of different characters, like not, not unlike the characters in Final Fantasy games I played as a kid. So like we had this idea that, okay, we have to have several different wizard characters. And of course, when you first think about a wizard character, you, you might think something like Amadeus that a man with a white beard or something sure. <laughs> pointing yeah. at. Yeah. So, of course, if it was a game with just, I don't know, nine or how many characters there were. But anyways, if it had like a bunch of similar looking wizard characters, that would be as interesting. And there is now quite different ones. When I was thinking uh, about those Final Fantasy characters and why why do I like them and that they are so varied? I thought about that actually I really find variation really important in all aspects of game art. So from the details of a single environment asset to the varying locations through all the levels in the game, uh, there are unlimited possibilities to create rich worlds with diverse environments and characters, so why not use that? to our advantage as well. What was the most challenging aspect of the redesign for your character Zoya for Trine 4? It's always quite a challenge to remake the familiar character designs. So the heroes of Trine have been adventuring in three games or three Trine games before Trine 4. So it was a bit intimidating to go and change something that people have already got used to. And my intention was to keep the essence of the characters intact so that they are still familiar enough, but also update their look so they would fit to the new clearer art style and my vision as closely as possible. For Zoya, keeping the white outfit and the hood was a must, though it might not be the most logical color choice for a sneaky thief character, but mm -hmm. it was just something very iconic for Zoya. Yes, so I wanted to keep that aspect and 
uh, I wanted to consider the story and the journey through different environments. So what the character is doing and what kind of outfit would support that the best. So also make it look believable. And there was like many different kinds of levels, summery meadows and then some really cold winter levels. So having some kind of balance because we cannot change the outfits. What personal or artistic work project are you most proud of? Um, it can also be outside of games. And this is the most obvious uh, answer, but of time or okay. So, so because that's probably the biggest uh, production and the just the project that I'm I'm just <laughs> honestly proudest. Mm -hmm. So it's just a huge uh, team effort and seeing my visions come true in that quite big production and having the whole art team working based on my uh, ideas and of course everybody adding to the project like their own ideas it's not just me like I just kind of uh, lead the ship but but all the artists are part of it and have unique ideas so it's really great to see a big game project coming together from the start to end and it was also really nice to be able to make some actual character art myself there so that's something I don't have so much time always to do so there is a lot of responsibilities and lead management type responsibilities so I was happy to be able to squeeze in some character art uh, time as well. And yeah, it's just really rewarding to see the game materialize and when it's launched and uh, we get feedback from the players. It feels really amazing once you have been working on a project in secret for so long and then it's out and we can hear what players think. It's really Great. How long was the production time for Try and Fall? It was about three years, so quite long, but it always feels that it would be nice to have a bit more extra time so sure. you can polish everything. If you could take only one art book with you to a desert island, what would that be and why? Well, nowadays I get my daily art dose from art station as mm -hmm. probably many people so i'd pack uh, an ipad and solar power bank that <laughs> i could also use the ipad for creating art myself and sure. that's actually something i basically do every summer as i go to my summer cottage which is on an island and there is no electricity but if i had to say an actual book mm -hmm. i'd say this book called Color and Light, A Guide for the Realist Painter by James Gurney. Mm -hmm. As the lighting is something I still want to understand more deeply. So I've uh, also got the book in my library. It's so easy to apply that knowledge to digital art, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that even though I like stylized styles, it's still the fundamental stuff. So lighting is is something that that should still be like based on realism really heavily mm -hmm. and well we do have some uh, liberties in trying games with lighting but but still it's it's always gonna look better if it's kind of realistic so maybe we can boost some aspects like make stuff more glowy than it really is but what tips for motivation can you give an aspiring 3D character artist wanting to break into the games industry? I would say that do the art that your heart desires, so then you can become so good in it, so, so other people will start to desire your art. So that's something that I find important, that you are doing the things you love. So it's going to be a lot of work becoming really good at art but it's really rewarding each time you see how you have improved and 
there are really amazing artists, for example, online. And some artists might feel like discouraged that when they're comparing themselves to super amazing artists and be like, oh, I'm never going to be so good. Mm -hmm. But I would say that instead of being discouraged, uh, you should find them as uh, inspirational for you and motivate yourself. Like they can show you like, oh, this is the possibilities that you can create if you if you keep learning and practicing. So everybody's artistic journey is their own, but you should it, have it as this inspiration instead of a kind of discouragement. I think it's also really good to consider if the character art specifically is the thing that you want to do the most. Like it seems that the character art is the most popular one that students are interested in and characters are often seen as the soul of the game and the aspect that we can really identify really strongly so I really understand very well especially being character artist myself that the character art might be the number one dream job for very many artists but it's really good to also consider what other possibilities there are like there are less known areas of art that People might be surprised that they might be the right fit for them. Like, for example, I know some artists who first thought that they have to be 3D character artists in order to become professional game artists. And in the end, they have found out that they really enjoy making, for example, 3D environment assets or a level artist job turns out to be their calling. So building levels or environments out of 3D assets made by other artists in the instead of making their assets yourself is also like something that game artists can do. There are a lot of different possibilities, but yeah, of course, if character art is your thing, then of course go for it. I do have one a tip. It's kind of advertisement, but we have this game art learning resources that we have been working on at Frozen Byte, and we recently just uh, published this new level art guide in our Frozen Byte public wiki. And there you can also find our 3D asset workflow guide where our workflow is explained in detail. And I have got some feedback from the game art students before that it has been useful. So I thought I would mention it here. Yeah, that's really, I've actually seen a few of those, those guides. And I have to say, if you're you know, if you're looking to apply to companies like Frozen Byte, I think they're they're quite a godsend, really. Um, really mm. useful information, and I, I think it's very thorough from when I've looked through them as well. So, yeah, I think it's it's very lucky that you've uh, for students that you've put those guides out there. Yeah, I'm really really happy to hear that because it was something I I personally worked on a lot, and of course with my coworkers. And we are like hoping that it's going to help and kind of give the idea of what the work is in reality, like more detail and not just like it might be a bit vague how what the work actually is before you get in. So it's useful to know and then you can also already learn and practice the workflow or get to know those important aspects. So. I'm hoping that that's something that can help. Do you think it's, it's a very beneficial for students to um, to show their work in game? So, for example, if they test it in a in a game engine or make a short video or have renders of the actual character or prop in the game, do you think that's very important for an art director to see? I wouldn't say it's like super important. That's of course. Well, we we have an in-house game engine, so. There is this version of our engine from Trine Tree launch that is available for everybody, but it's it's starting to be quite old. So our editor is not the like latest editor is not available for like publicly. But of course, if you could use any engine to, for example, build some environments or something, but I would say for just one 3D model or characters, it's maybe not that important to see for me because that's something like, like I think the most important is that you have the 
fundamental knowledge and the artistic eye and then you can kind of learn that kind of technical stuff of course like if you have really good uh, optimized geometry in your model for example and good uh, loops in the face or something that it's good for animation that's like of course helping but it's not the first thing I look at so I would say it's the secondary stuff and stuff that you can learn more easily than than the artistic eye okay so I wanted to say a big thank you Charlotte for joining us today on the podcast yes thank you very much it was really nice to talk about game art with you Subscribe for more tips on how to create a winning game art portfolio.